I mean, for putting, what I found over so long, everything starts with the alignment. You get the alignment right, and then once you've got the alignment right, then you start looking at how the ball's starting and rolling. And then you start looking at the technical things, you know, distance, eye line, matching your shaft lines with your forearms and stuff like that, ball positional stuff and tempo stuff. You know, it's like, but everything revolves around that, that aim. You aim wrong, technically you're going to do something to manufacture something else. So that's always everyone's like starting point. All right, tell me before we start, what's your concepts on putting? What are you trying to do? What's acceptable for you? Like what's, what's a good and what's bad? Uh, bad is a three, four, or recently five putt. <laughs> Getting it within a two putt range would be perfect. Like so you're, you're, you're happy if you can two putt most I'm, of the stuff. If I can ha if I can two putt on every green, I'll be smiling. And and is there a, like a particular range, uh, distance range, or slope, or downhill, uphill, or that I don't like? Yes, downhill. So anything where I can't attack it. So anything that I feel like I got to do a sort of a short jabby putt, okay. I find very challenging. The uphill putts, no problem. You said short jabby. The, the main thing for me is any time that I have to try reduce or get a, a, a tap as opposed to being able to flow through the putt, mm -hmm. then I, I, I don't know, I, I seem to do that stutter, that jabby putt. And how do you rate your hand finger pressure when you're putting? Should be okay. You like relatively soft. Is that what you feel? Yeah. Uh, and all the way through, like you don't feel any like re-gripping, retention. No, nothing. Okay. No, nothing like my irons. Okay. Go for it. I want to see a couple. It's pretty good. All right. Do you ever line up your golf ball? No, uh, I have before. I think probably because my brain didn't agree with it, it ended up being worse. Causing inner, inner tor turmoil. Okay, if you're going to fight it, because to get it right, where you're really happy with it, it's a lot of fidgeting. Mm. So yeah, I think so. that the other thing is often I would I would line it up, come back, not agree, and then it just at the time I think I needed more more time to practice lining it up so it wouldn't take so much time on a green yeah, yeah, yeah but if you can stand up over a golf ball and aim pretty much where you want to go um, i think what you could probably do just as a little tip instead of having one line draw two lines so if you get two lines in there it's easier for you to see a train track yeah than a single line okay uh, and make them short fat lines yeah. yeah. Don't make them like one long thin line. Okay. Make them like a little thicker. Like triple little... track territory. Yeah, virtually. The problem is, Matt's often seen that I my alignment sometimes goes out. Yeah. And if I have a ball that I know is lined up, I think if I can practice, then and yeah. probably with a triple track will be easier to do. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a ball that it's just easy to see three lines or two lines yeah. than it is to see one thin line. I'll try it with this. Yeah, I used to always put two lines on my golf ball. exactly where you hit it, but it's not yours. <laughs> That's a good line. So this is what I see straight away. Before you lined it up, you were pulling your putter so much. I, I, I don't know if it's a line thing. I don't know if it's because you've got a target channel to run through now. Yeah. Um, but those two putting strokes there are so different from without a line. Mm. Now, whether it's a visual thing, whether it's not, I don't know. But all I can comment on is based off what I saw versus the, the first couple versus those ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, really good strokes. Okay. I'm not anal when it comes to how do you need to do it. All I care about is can I get that ball rolling end over end? Can you return it? Does it? Are there good matchups? There are. Things that, you know, every coach would be, oh, I want it like this and I want it like that and da da da. But when I see you start the ball end over end mm. on the line, intended line where that ball started, you know, or where it's aimed and it's, it's starting on line, it's like now I know it's very feel related, getting the speed right, mm. which is going to be you 
a little bit of tension, pressure stuff, a lot of practice. Yeah. Just playing golf a lot, you're going to create your own feels, you know. Mm. Um, I don't see major problems with your tempo. I actually think it's okay. I'd probably say a little bit more weight in the putt ahead would be nice on this particular speed of green. Yeah. You know, so generally we'll go lighter putters on quicker greens. Yeah. And, and we'll go heavier putters on slower greens. You know, um, I don't know what these are running at at the moment, but obviously it's not, it's, it's not super quick at the moment. So you find what works for you, but for me, try and get some lines out on a golf ball. Uh, I, I really think that that would help you. Lines are great if you're picking the right line for the right speed. Yeah. That I can't help you with, but I can get you to putt the ball better in terms of stroke. But what I've seen in your particular case is the minute you put the line there, your stroke automatically Cleans worked better up, and yeah. worked more online rather than you aiming wrong, trying to make the putter work a certain way and then trying to recuperate it or recover it. So it just looks like a more repetitive, it looks like a much better technical stroke. Yeah. The minute I, I, I see you aiming correctly. You know, so the, the first earlier few you had, um, you sort of, without the lines, you sort of had it there and then you went like, you aimed way right and then you went whew, straight across it and you actually finished low side. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of fidgeting, especially when you're trying to get ready, but you can do this when someone's putting over there, right? Yeah. Like you can just get it ready and yeah. just take your time and really just try and, the, the more time you spend doing this, honestly, it, number one, it gets quicker over time. You can just get it, get it working. The biggest problem that a lot of people have is when they're trying to get the line right, they lose sight and focus of the distance. So once you create your station and you've got your line right, the line's fixed. Now you're focusing purely on feel and speed control. All right? The line is only one small aspect of it. The line, the speed will dictate what line you use. Which is why I'd say, you always say, be careful with the caddies because they don't know your pace. Yep, 100%. I, I, I definitely agree with that. Mm. You know, so look, assuming all things being beautiful and you get the perfect speed, just keep lining up your, your, your putts because I think it, in, in the long term, it's really gonna help you, number one, with your putter face control, your feet and body lines. One thing I will say to you is, what I'd like to see is, I'd like to see you approach the putt in a different way. Um, where I sort of see where you sort of approach it, you, you sort of come very front on. I want you aiming open to the hole. Doesn't mean you open like this, right? But it's just like a little bit open. So, you know, aim the putt ahead, use your line. If you need to add extra lines, I'll tell you where to go and get it done. What I'd like to see is, I'd like you to see you to aim your putter face to the line because you've done all your prep work already, right? Mm. Okay, it's like, yep, I'm happy with it. Assuming that is the line that you want to hit, I can aim my putter and I can just get my stance right. And then from there, you just, trusting the feel and speed of, it's short, but you're just trusting the feel and speed. Yeah, to get there. Yeah, Takes all that other thought process. Correct, completely. you know, yeah. once you've got that line, it's just purely feel, feel, feel. My favorite tip, I'm also, I, I don't know who gave it to me in the first place, like any shot. Yeah. Just get that cut first, the line of feet. Yeah. This is, this is magic though, I could, like this, just to change the whole alignment over one thing. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think you might be Yoda of golf, bro. <laughs> I think I'm full of shit. Just sounds good. Yeah, that's a big chance. I'm just going to alter your setup a little bit. Okay. And. I'm just gonna get you to do something slightly different, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you as we're doing it. I just wanna see your postural stuff change first, and I'm just gonna give you a little bit of special sauce just to see if it works. Uh, it could work. Might be an absolute failure, but we'll see. So that's 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 beautiful line right there. All right, so I want you to approach and walk into the golf ball like you normally would. This time, well, same thing, I want you to aim the putter head first. Okay, so 
the biggest thing I don't like about your putt is not the distance or the posture or anything else. I just don't like to see your arm line and your shaft line work on different lines. So, yes, sir. Straight away. Now you create room and space in between your hands and your thighs. Okay. And then now your forearms and your shaft match. That's beautiful. Ooh, what a strike. What a little strike on that. I mean, that, that there to me, there's geometry to it. Yeah. Now, any time that you've got your hands to this way, or it doesn't match your shaft line, this is probably why you need to get fitted for the right lie angle and length of the putter. But working with what we've got seems to be okay. Getting this, you know, the more flat this is, flat in terms of the angle, the more round it comes around and round. All right, now, neither do I want a, ver a putter vertical that works at, let's say, 90 degrees, then it has to work straight through, straight back, straight through. It has to work like right on line, like mm. straight, straight. I just want to get this to a certain point where you're not overdone and it makes you want to sort of pull straight inside, which is what you do and which is what your alignment will sort of counteract a lot of these things. So that's, it's going to be one or the other in terms of, let's say my hands are too low, the natural arc being low is going to want to go in to in. It's what, what you aim well. To mm. me, aiming ev is everything in putting first. Yeah. I wanted to get some specific target in terms of his putter. Um, get him to aim properly. Just get the forearms looking better so that it doesn't look so jammed and caught. So he's got a little bit of room here. His eye line over the golf ball is, is A-OK. -okay. I have no problems with that whatsoever. I just don't like how the shaft doesn't match his forearms. So if I can get that looking right, then I want to see what happens to his stroke. And then from there, it's like, okay, is there something weird going on that we can sort of eliminate or mm. maybe add little bits and pieces to? That's beautiful. I love that. That's, that's exactly where you aimed it. And it was end of end. I like that line. Yeah, as it, you can just as sort of see rolling. it track. Yeah. That's beautiful. So here, you're too far ahead of the ball, so it's hard for you to aim up, especially mm -hmm. once you sort of get your feet set. I want you to get this foot a little further back behind. Then when you open up, then it's easy for you just to step straight into it. I don't know if you, see, if you, if you feel that even. Well, when I was doing it before, I felt like... I moved the club a lot because yeah. I had to move a lot. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Dude. That is in. <laughs> so to me, that feels like I'm breaking my wrist. It feels like I'm doing a pull that is hinging. I don't know if it looks like it, but that's the feel that I have for long putts. You know, um, when you're chipping longer, yeah. do you feel hinge? Yes. Okay, so it's not a it, it's not a bad thing. I think what's I think when you get into really really pure greens that are super quick, you're going to feel like you don't need to hinge as much because it rolls out so much more that mm. you don't need to hit it as hard or swing it as long. You know, as you start getting into slower greens, which is what every Tom, Dick, and Harry plays. You know, they're playing greens around running at eight, seven, nine, and stimp, whatever. When they get into these long putts, I will tell you there is an element of hinge, but it's, it's, it's flow. Yeah. I think that's what you're referring to. And if that's what you're, you are referring to, as the club gets to a certain length, it feels like you can't hold it off any longer. That's just like a exactly. mini chip pitch. It just starts to naturally play. So yes, it, it, you're not gonna be standing up here like a robot where you're just locked out and then you're like, because the minute you lock out yourself, 
you've got to create the hit, you're not letting it flow. So I always find, whether it's golf swing, whether it's putting, whether it's chipping, I always find there's like a sequence of events that happen. You know, so your putt is never just your shoulders or your chest, because then everything else is dead. You know, you, there is uniformity, there's some togetherness involved. But whatever the case is, the head is the thing that travels the most, followed by the hands, followed by the arms, followed by the body. So same thing with your golf swing as well. You know, the, the club head moves the furthest in the golf swing. So look at it like your club head's almost like a tire, you know? Um, and then you've got your rims, which is more like your hands and your arms. And then you've got your axles, which is your body. You know, so the more supple you are, or, or the more constant and flowy you are, it's gonna be easier for you to dictate your distance control, rather than trying to dictate your distance control from how hard you're gonna hit in your hands in a way. You know, so we're just trying to get even. And then if it needs to have a little bit of this, that's fine because as it gets long, you need a little bit of it. Very hard for you to you just get jammed up and trapped out on it. That's just probably where you feel. Well, I, if anything, that just makes me feel better about it because yeah. now I can use it without thinking I'm breaking all the rules of golf. Oh, no, no, no. Doing no. my putting stroke. I mean, you're not, you're not playing 13 stimp meter greens, right? Mm -hmm. Like generally you'd be playing eight to, to 10. Yeah. Um, the minute you start getting into these 50, 60, 80 footers, I don't know any golfer on earth who's, who can't use wrist. I mean, you can't not use wrist and, and go to here. I mean, like, it's ridiculous. It's like, you know, it's gonna be, there's gonna be an element of hinge or let's call it breakage and an element of hit as well. Because you're playing slow greens, like you can't, you can't continue this long. Like, you're just going to okay. top it all day long. Great.